Welcome to the latest episode of the Edgar Rice Burroughs Mini Podcast. These short podcasts are meant to supplement the full-length episodes that I do along with Jess Stewart and uh, uh, with Jess Terrell and Scott Stewart. I was reversing their names there. Sorry, guys. Uh, in which we usually discuss a, a work of Edgar Rice Burroughs in detail. Right now, we are using the mini podcast to do a chapter-by-chapter analysis of the 1912 novel Tarzan of the Apes, and we're going to finish up tonight. We're on the last chapter. Now, my name is Tim DeForest. I'm the author of several books about things like uh, pulp magazines, old-time radio, and newspaper comic strips. Uh, I keep a blog about such things at comics, old-time radio, and other cool stuff. So uh, please feel free to visit my uh, visit me there and uh, take a look at what I write. Now today, as I said, we're talking about chapter 28, the concluding chapter of the 1912 novel Tarzan of the Apes, appropriately titled Conclusion. Now, please note that we will be including spoilers about this chapter and occasionally for later novels in the series. And I do recommend you reread the chapter before listening to the podcast as we will uh, as I will be presuming you're familiar with the events in it as I discuss them. Now first, I have to say that Porter and Flanders' exchange of dialogue after seeing Camler is safe from the fire is sincerely funny. And then Tarzan's dealing with Candler is wonderful. It's clear that Tarzan would have killed the jerk had Jane not intervened. And I love Tarzan's reaction to her pleading for his life. You would wish this to live, he asked in surprise. Jane's motivation for stopping him uh, that he doesn't want, is that he doesn't want Tarzan to be arrested for murder. And it's not based on any concern for Candler. And that's just icing on the cake. It's a great scene. But Burroughs uses this incident for a double purpose. We do indeed get to enjoy seeing a bully get his comeuppance. But it also causes Jane to question whether she and Tarzan should get married. His differences with a so-called civilized man is made clear with his attack on Candler. And as I mentioned in the discussion of the previous chapter, Jane's doubts here are perfectly understandable, as is her spur-of-the-moment decision to accept Cecil's proposal. So we get the same issues of, of old-fashioned honor here, and that once Jane promises her, her hand to Cecil, she won't go back on it. We see her struggle with this decision in the sequel, The Return of Tarzan, but for now, she's true to her word. And even if we don't quite agree with the strict code of honor she is following, it's impossible not to admire her that she does faithfully maintain this code. Her complete honesty with Tarzan after she realizes she does love him also shows a strong character. And of course, the book ends with Tarzan showing a sense of honor and self-sacrifice as well, deciding not to claim his Greystoke inheritance so that this fortune will, be, will is still available to Jane when he marries Cecil. Tarzan is now a man not an ape, because he can put the happiness of others above his own. But this, of course, isn't the end of the chapter. Tarzan and Jane will end up together at the end of the sequel, and despite, despite Burroughs' initial intention to kill her off in Tarzan the Untamed a few years later, they do live happily ever after. Well, mostly happily ever after, because Jane will always maintain her habit to get kidnapped a lot. So ends one of the most uh, one of the greatest adventure novels ever written. And it's the premiere appearance of one of fiction's most iconic characters. I really ho hope you've enjoyed this exploration of the novel. Um, if anybody listening has any ideas of what other novel we might do on a chapter by chapter basis in these mini podcasts, if you've been enjoying this and want to hear another one, please let us know either uh, in, in the comments section in any place we, um, we post this. Um, you, you can comment on any one of the very various Facebook links, uh, which is where we get the most comments, on uh, the uh, ERB podcast blog that we post these on, or comments on any of the podcast sites it appears on. We would enjoy hearing from you, and we would like to know whether this has been worthwhile enough to do it again. Um, so once again, my name is Tim DeForest. Please visit my blog at Comics Old Time Radio and other cool stuff where you'll also find a link to my Amazon.com authors page. And we do appreciate your listening. Uh, we would also appreciate it, once again, if you're enjoying this, to take a moment to leave a review on iTunes. And uh, we will be back soon 
with future episodes of our full-length podcasts and with these mini-podcasts in one form or another. Thank you very much.